We now present The Adventures of Marco Polo. Akmath the magician revealed many wonders to Kublai Khan and the Venetians. Eventually, the day came for the departure, when Marco Polo and his companions were to accompany Kublai Khan on a tour of his dominions. During the journey, Akmath tried to poison the Khan against Marco Polo and his friends. He prophesied that at the end of the first day's journey, one of the Venetians would fall from an elephant, and he tried to persuade the Khan that this would be a sign that the Venetians were plotting against him. At the end of the first day's journey, a camp was erected. Kublai Khan and Akmath watched the elephant which was carrying Marco Polo and his companions. The elephant was duly made to kneel. Marco Polo and his father Niccolo dismounted safely, but Matteo stumbled and fell upon the desert. Then Akmath stated that his prophecy had come true, and Kublai Khan looked gloomy and thoughtful. The Venetians were bidden to dine with Kublai Khan in the great scarlet royal tent, and after they had partaken of many delicacies, they made inquiries about their forthcoming journey. Kublai Khan sat at the head of the table. On his right side sat Akmath the magician. Most noble Khan, what is the name of the first province which we are to visit? Uh, the first province is Belashan, one of my richest provinces. Here we shall find many mines which yield gold, silver, copper, lead, and zinc. It must be a very rich district, O Most High. Oh, it is a very rich district, and one which many enemies have tried to seize from me. But the district is well guarded. A guard is necessary because the wild hill people of Balashan cannot be tamed. They count the great Khan as their enemy. They count me as their enemy, but they have been driven into the hills. Uh, those are the hills which we can see from here. Yes, and if they dared, the hill people would make an attack on me. They are wild and untamed savages, but I have an army with me, so we are quite safe, my friend. I am interested to hear that so many valuable minerals can be mined in Balishan almost high. But mayhap we of Venice can arrange to buy some of these minerals in exchange for goods which can be brought by us from Venice. Uh, we can talk of that later. Tomorrow, at sunset, we should reach Caligar, the principal city of Balishan. There we will stay for two days. You look tired, most noble and gracious Khan. Is it your will that we should retire to our own tent now? It is my will. One of my captains will accompany you to your tent. I trust your rest will be easy and undisturbed. Come, Matteo, come, Marco. The Khan has signified that we shall retire. We commence our journey at daybreak. You will be aroused in time. We wish you an easy night's rest, Most Noble Khan. I return that wish. Most Noble Khan, heard you the questions that those men of the West plied you with? They covered the valuable mines in the province of Balashan. Always they question you. Oh, I cannot believe that they are plotting against me. I have appointed Marco Polo governor of my province of Armenia. Would you have me retract my word? Would you have these people lead you to your doom? Listen. I hear the noise of drums. The hill people are watching us, most noble Khan. If they dared, they would attack us. The beating of those drums means that they have seen their enemy. The camp is well guarded, Akmath. There is no chance of a surprise attack. The camp is well guarded. But I beg of you to let me destroy those enemies which are within the camp. I can arrange for the Venetians to be poisoned when they take their first meal on the morrow. Oh, I cannot agree to that. You have not yet proved that they are plotting against me. Did they not strive to bring about the downfall of my nephew, Van Chu? Did they not aid me to quell the rebellion? Was it not in their interest to aid you? Had not Van Chu condemned them to death? If I am convinced that they are plotting against me, then they will be poisoned. But I am tired now, Akmath. Go inspect the camp. See that the guards are placed at every point. May you rest well and easily. We will speak of this matter again. I will obey your orders, O Most High. Meanwhile, Marco Polo and his companions had retired to their own tent. Marco Polo stood at the entrance of the tent. He looked up at the velvet black sky, at the myriad twinkling stars, and he breathed deeply of the soft, balmy death there. Matthew had already retired, 
He called impatiently to Marco. Marco, don't stand there at the entrance of the tent. Can you not sleep? My bones are aching after being jolted on that great elephant. And we'll have another jolting tomorrow. Well, I'm not preventing you from sleeping, my uncle, but I am vaguely disturbed. Why are you disturbed, Marco, my son? It seemed that the great Khan was hostile to us when we dined with him. I feel that Akmath has turned him against us. Akmath is quite well disposed to us. I spoke with him at some length when we were dining. He told me of the province of Volashan. He told me of the great mine of lapis lazuli, which is to be found near here. Listen. Hear you those drums? I am told that those drums are beaten by the hill people, who hate Kublai Khan. That they are a savage race, but they dare not attack this camp. And yet there is a sinister note in the rolling of those drums. I am afraid, Uncle Matthew. Are you a coward, Marco, that you are afraid? Yes, afraid that some unknown enemy is working against us. You too may sleep, but I will keep watch all night. But you need some sleep. Mayhap I will sleep tomorrow, under the canopy on the elephant. But tonight I will not close my eyes. I think I will go now for a little walk through the camp. And leave our tent unguarded? You may remain awake until I return, my uncle. Mayhap my fears are groundless, but I am restless and worried. I think your fears are groundless, Marco. I saw no difference in the Khan's manner, but should you desire to take a walk before retiring, I will not say you nay. Rest assured that I will watch over you both. Are you armed, Marco? I carry with me my trusty dagger. Well, let us hope you will not have to use it, my son. Now, do nothing that will invoke the enmity of the great Khan. You may rely on me, father. Some hours later, a stealthy figure crept from one of the tents at the end of the camp. This figure noiselessly made its way over the soft sand to a part of the camp which was unguarded. The night was warm and still, the silence broken only by the distant rumble of hostile drums. The stealthy figure made its way from the edge of the camp towards the high sand dune. Then the figure stopped. Suddenly the air was pierced by a sharp whistle, then an answering whistle, and another figure appeared round the side of the sand dune. The two figures drew close together. <coughs> Is that you, Van Chu? Yes, Akmat. I have been waiting for you these many hours. It was some time before I could leave the camp. The Khan dined with the Venetians, and he bade me see that all the guards were placed. How fares it with you, Van Chu? I am living amongst the hill people of Balasan. Hear you not their drums? I hear them. What would you have me do? Make an attack on the camp? No. The camp is too well guarded. Contain yourself in patience, Van Chu. For many weeks have I been hidden in the hills. Living like a primitive savage. The hill people are ready to do your bidding. They look upon you as a chieftain. They look upon me as a chieftain. But I pine to return to Pekin. Let me make an attack on the city. While the Khan is distant, I will seize the city and defend it against him. We cannot risk defeat. The city is well guarded. Your enemy, Toktai, has been appointed governor. And he will keep a close watch so that no invaders may attack the city. What would you have me do? The Khan goes to Balashan, and from there to Kampishu. You will gather the hill people and all the enemies of Kubla Khan as we go on our journey, so that in time you will have a vast army, an army which will be large enough to defeat those men whom Kubla Khan takes on his journey. All those who oppose his rule, all those who would rebel, will join your standard. You will remain some miles behind us, but you will see me each night, and I will tell you when the time is ripe to strike. When your army can fall on the army of Kublai Khan and so destroy all his followers. Then, with me, you will march to the gates of Pekin. By my orders, the gates will be opened for us. Then will you be proclaimed emperor. But for my aid, you will share half your empire with me. That is our agreement, and I will keep to it. But you bid me keep patient for too long. It will be many weeks before I can raise an army large enough to attack the army of Kublai Khan. A few weeks will not make any difference to our plans. We must be sure that when we strike, we cannot fail. You have my orders, Van Chu. Gather all the savages and the hill people. Follow us wherever we go. 
strike when I give the order. All right. I will obey your orders, Akmat. Right. Right. Look over there. What do you see? Look. Over there. Something moved. I swear I saw the figure of a man. Over there. To the right of the sand dunes. No one would follow me here. Should we be overheard? I will be put to death. All our plans will come to nothing. Peace, peace. We could not have been overheard. Well, I swear I saw someone moving over there. Come now. Come. Let us look. If it please you, we will look. But nothing will be found. We will look. Tell me. What of those Venetians whom Kubla Khan has befriended? They are my enemies. They brought about my downfall before. I hate the one called Marco Polo. I am poisoning Kubla Khan's mind. Before many days are over, he will give orders that they are to die. See? Look, Sancho. I told you we would find no one here. There is someone near here. Hark. Did you not hear the falling of sand? I heard something. Ah, we are spied upon. We must find the spy and kill him. My knife is sharp. And mine is ready to be plunged into the heart of any spy. Look. Move there to the right. I see something. It is a...